Okay, so I want to take a moment to talk about our heart failure program and how we've incorporated hemodynamic monitoring in our management of congestive heart failure. So I want to uh, talk about this uh, uh, hemodynamic monitor. It's called the Cardio MEMS device. Uh, this, it's, it's, it's essentially a small glass clip with two nitinol clips. Uh, it's about this big. Uh, that uh, runs on radio frequency. It doesn't require a battery, and it's uh, implanted percutaneously uh, via right heart catheterization in the left pulmonary artery. Uh, patient uh, goes home with a pillow which has a sensor. They lie down on the pillow and they press a button. It takes less than a minute for the sensor to uh, monitor their pressures, record it, and transmit it to us on a wireless link. So essentially patients don't need a telephone line at home. All they need is a stable Wi-Fi connection and it's transmitted to us. Now, as you can see, so based on the CHAMPION trial you know, conducted by Dr. Abraham Adamson and colleagues, nine months ago, this device was shown to significantly decrease hospitalizations for congestive heart failure uh, in a study period of six months. And it's almost unprecedented that uh, a, a device with only 550 patients and a six-month study was approved by the FDA for clinical use. Uh, I'm, I'm really pleased to share with you that uh, we have, uh, you know, amalgamated this technology in our clinical use. We have uh, uh, implanted 28 such devices. Uh, currently, the you know leading implanters in all of Florida, and uh, uh, we can essentially track these patients and their pressures even before they get symptomatic. So, as you see in these figures, when these curves start to go up, patients' pressures in the heart and lungs they start to go up, but they're not, they're not symptomatic at this point. And and if you intervene at this point before uh, beginning of symptoms, you can potentially not just decrease the pressures, keep them normal, but keep them out of the hospital. The other very interesting thing that's come out of this uh, uh, CHAMPION trial is a lot of sub-studies uh, sub uh, are done on these patients, and what's been shown is that uh, while there is benefit in decreased hospitalizations, when patients are monitored twice a week as per trial requirements. Some investigators looked at these pressures every day and made uh, decisions based on these pressures rather than symptoms and found an additional 30% decrease in hospitalizations as compared to the control group. Again, highlighting the importance of uh, intervening before the onset of symptoms based on pressures. So again, what, what kind of patients qualify for this device? So essentially patients who have class three congestive heart failure, which is uh, symptoms of breathlessness and shortness of breath on mild amount of activity. And if they've been hospitalized once in the past year for congestive heart failure. Uh, we are starting to see tremendous benefit of this device in patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. What that means is patients whose hearts are strong but stiff. In fact, in that subgroup, uh, in the analysis in the CHAMPIONS trial, found a 50% decrease in hospitalizations in six months. And we are starting to replicate that experience in our clinical practice. Uh, the drawback uh, right now is that only Medicare reimburses for this device, and it is a bit costly, but in a recent cost analysis study, it was shown that if we can prevent two hospitalizations uh, in a year, essentially you pay for the device. And we're hoping that once one-year data comes out, uh, other third parties will start reimbursing for the device. So one of the limitations in my mind is uh, that it's reimbursable only by Medicare for now. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is uh, that these are really exciting times in uh, managing congestive heart failure. 
uh, essentially after 15 years, uh, two drugs have been approved for management of congestive heart failure. And uh, one is a combination of a natriuretic peptide degrader inhibitor, neprolysin inhibitor with the ARB, which has shown an additional 30 to 35 percent survival and decreased hospitalization benefit when compared to standard therapy such as ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers. Uh, I have at least uh, probably more than two dozen patients on this medicine now, and everybody has shown improvement. Uh, there's another exciting drug uh, called ivabradine, which slows down the heart in patients with congestive heart failure. And it's shown that if your heart rate is fast, that's a bad sign in congestive heart failure, and that reflects the amount of norepinephrine or these bad hormones the brain releases and sends wrong signals to the heart. So if we can slow down the heart rate, uh, we already use beta blockers, but if somebody is still fast, despite optimal use of beta blockers like carvedilol, we can start ivabradine as per the SWIFT trial, and which has shown another 20% decrease in events all across the board. So there are additional therapies out there for congestive heart failure now, uh, which are starting to make a difference, uh, not only in uh, improved quality of life, but also improved survival on top of baseline uh, device and drug therapy we have for congestive heart failure. This is Dr. Sumant Lamba from First Coast Cardiovascular Institute. Uh, we thank you for mm -hmm. watching this segment. Uh, we are extremely passionate about uh, treating uh, not just cardiovascular illnesses, but congestive heart failure in particular. And we encourage you to visit our website for additional information. Thank you.